Hello, hi, welcome back to my course on enhancing soft skills and personality. This is the fifth week and we are on second unit lesson number 22nd and this is the second module on English skills and the second lesson on common errors. Some people asked me why have I put this English, English with W. I just wanted to clear to all of you. I want you to win this English skills game. So, it is a kind of game you need to know the rules and then you have to play and you also need to know the rules so that you can break the rules. But if you do not know the rules and play the game, so there is minimal possibility of winning this game. So, let us win this English, uh, look at it as a game and uh, in the last week uh, we uh, discussed about various aspects of uh, developing your uh, soft skills and uh, personality. But then this week I said that let us focus more on English skills because uh, people sometimes think that this is very close to developing soft skills. So, if you say that you are good in soft skills, but then you do not speak good English, people do not accept that you have actually developed your soft skills. And this time we are focusing on enhancing the skills, which means slightly we want to go one step ahead. Now, last lesson I gave you about 20 confusing words and then I wanted you to work on them. So, let us take a quick highlight of what I did. So, in the previous lesson, I discussed about the importance of developing English skills in the globalized scenario. English language as such is used as the common language, the lingua franca and the preferred medium for all kinds of international level communications. So, whether you would like to go as a tourist or as a student or as just a business person, you need to develop your English skills. Besides, many books, films and other knowledge disseminating materials are all produced in English and people invariably identify soft skills with English skills. Although this common perception is not fully correct, it is significant to possess English language skills to the extent one avoids committing the common errors. What do I mean by this? I am saying that at least you speak in simple English that is understandable by the people around you, so that you do not confuse words and you do not commit common mistakes in your day to day communication. Just to begin with, I gave you about 20 commonly misused words in everyday usage. Now, in this lesson, we will learn about the correct usage of them and I will again give you 20 more uh, sentences asking you to identify the words or phrases which are commonly considered to be mistakes which normally people commit in day to day communication in English. Now, let us check your answers. Last time you had actually written the answers, uh, I hope in your notebook somewhere you have kept it. Now, take them and then as we go for the correct one, just tick it and give one mark and at the end of it we will assess where you stand as far as English skills are concerned. The first one, the correct answer, the English introduced cricket in India. The English here refers to the people. When you use the article the before English, it refers to the English people, the British people especially. In fact, when you use the before any kind of uh, like languages, for example, French. When you say the French, it refers to the French people. Same thing with German. When you say the German, it refers to the German people. So, second one obviously is English. That is the correct answer as it is used in the sentence. I do not enjoy watching English movies. Now, English here refers to the language. I hope you see the difference, you understand the difference. The English will refer to the people. English without the article refers to the language. The next pair of words, 
I said I will not pronounce uh, previously. The words are resume and resume. Now, when I pronounce you can slightly understand the difference. The first answer is the game will resume after the lunch break. Now, resume here means to restart or continue after a break to begin to commence after usually uh, giving a short break, but resume is a brief summary of one's achievements, skills and experience shorter than a CV or a bio data and it is used in sentences like the one we have given. Shruti's resume is so impressive that she will get an interview call from any company. So, resume is to continue after a break resume refers to a short bio data. Fifth one and the sixth one, the pair is alone and lonely. The correct answer is, I live alone in the bungalow. Alone is to be without others on your own independently. In the next one, you should have used lonely. Hemingway's The Old Man and the Sea depicts the life of a lonely fisherman. Lonely means lacking companions. So, he is not at least initially supported by his uh, fishermen uh, friends. So, he goes alone into the deep sea and he sometimes even feels lonely. So, it also amounts to feeling sad and preferring solitude. So, that is the difference. Alone just indicates the fact that somebody is living independently, single without others, whereas lonely uh, comes out with this feeling that you are maybe abandoned by others. Others are not with you, maybe deliberately, or you have chosen that deliberately, you prefer to live without them, and there is some kind of sadness associated with that most of the time. The next pair is childish and childlike. Correct answers is childish behavior is very irritating. Childish here means immature or lack of maturity, whereas Look at the next sentence, her childlike beauty appeals to everyone. Childlike is like a child, young and innocent. So, do not confuse the usage of these two words in alternate context. Okay. Let us go to the next pair between principal and principal. My principal got angry when I went late to the school for the third consecutive day. Now, principal refers to the head, the chief, the main teacher of a school. Most of the times, this error between principal and principal is committed when you usually write a letter. Okay, you, especially for principal, you write as P R I N C A P L E. So, you have to be very careful. Many people do not commit this in usage. They have bit careful, but while writing this error is uh, noted frequently. The tenth correct answer is a man who lives without any principle. Now, principle here refers to your rule or a kind of maxim or standard, especially of good behavior. See the difference, one refers to the person, the head, the other refers to rule or standard or a maxim normally of a good behavior. The next pair, which again I said I will not uh, pronounce, because again the pronunciation sort of gives away the answer. The pair is suit and sweet, although the spelling looks similar except for the e added in the second one. Correct answers, he wore a smart suit, now suit or pants here refers to the garment and the full set that the person has been wearing as a dress to cover uh, himself. Okay, this refers to the dress. The next one, they book the family suite. It actually sounds like suite in the hotel. Now, here suite means rooms in a building or an apartment consisting of a series of connected rooms used as a living unit. So, when you refer to family suite in a hotel, it means that you will just like feel like a family apartment. It will not give you a feeling of a single bedroom, double bedroom. You may even have a small kitchen, you will have 
uh, one master bedroom, two small bedrooms, there is a French space for uh, coming and discussing, it is a kind of drawing room kind of uh, front uh, one, the living room is given to you. So, it gives you the feeling of a family living there, although it is in a hotel, but they are all connected as a single unit. The next pair is between economic and economical, you are supposed to make a choice. The correct answer for 13 is the economic crisis of the 1920s is well known. Economic means financial related to money, wealth and production of it. Now, the next one economical is different from just financial or money as in the sentence that was given, the correct form is she was economical in arranging for the wedding party of her daughter. Now, economical here means being thrifty, frugal. It is not just uh, spending money too much, but it also amounts to avoiding waste, using the resources that you have in a very efficient manner. So, that amounts to being economic. 15 and 16, the choice given to you was between personal and personal, again slight difference only, but the first personal, he has written about his personal experiences in the book, personal, N O L, the last part is related to one's individual and private life. I personally uh, like you, but office I am showing you my uh, annoyance. So, it means as an individual I like you so much, but as your boss I have to talk to you in a different manner. The army personnel, so where look at the last part WNEL, that is the difference, were very efficient and brave. Personnel is staff or workforce, generally the word refers to group of people willing to obey orders. 17, 18, the correct uh, choices are in 17, the alternate pattern of light and dark colors looked beautiful on the bed sheet. Now, alternate means one after other or occurring by turns. So, suppose I say I will come for the job on alternate days, that means I will come one day, I leave the other day, then another day I leave one other day. So, that is the meaning. So, one after other, but usually it is occurring by turns, whereas alternative refers to a choice between two or sometimes more things, but where you have to select the second option. So, the underpass is a good alternative to the main road in case of heavy traffic. Here, alternative refers to the second option, a choice between two things. 19, there is a beautiful lake in this village. So, this is a common uh, error committed between T H E R E and T H E I R. Mostly in writing, this is very much evident because while speaking they sound similar. In writing, people confuse these two words. So, there is a beautiful lake in the village as is given in the example. It refers to something in or at that place, that location. So, there you remember the place, but when it is E I R, it is a pronoun and it refers to people as in the second example given. Due to the festival, the workers got their pay one week in advance. So, there refers to people of them or themselves. Now, uh, I hope you have been ticking the right answers and giving one mark and then crossing the wrong one and giving 0. Now, take a quick minute to add it up, find out the total and let us go to check your score. If you have got 20 out of 20, you are outstanding. So, your English skills is already at a superior level, you only need to polish it. If you are either 18 or 19, it is still excellent. If you are between 15 and 17, you are very good. If you are between 12 and 14, you are good. If it is in the range of 10 or 11, it is just fair. Okay, you need lot of improvement. 8 to 9 is 
average. So, again uh, you can do plenty more. 6 to 8 is below average, need to work hard to improve this area. 4 to 7 is poor, one has to work very hard and 0 to 3 is very poor. But I hope like most of you are in the range of uh, at least 12 to 14, that is the way we like the way we assess your assignments, we see that you are in that level. But by chance if some of you are uh, average or below average, so follow the suggestions given by the books suggested, work out and then keep on using them appropriately in day to day language, practice, okay. practice will make you perfect, listen to others, observe others, check whether they are speaking correctly or wrongly, use a good dictionary and that will uh, ensure that at least you have uh, polished English skills to work with. Now, let us go to next set of uh, sentences which are uh, slightly more challenging. Uh, this time I am not giving you the options and this time I want to test your English by asking you to give the correct form of the words underlined in the sentences which are given here. There are 20 sentences and look at the words which are underlined, no choice, but you have to tell me in the next video what is the right word and what is the correct form. Accordingly, you will get marks. Again, we will check your score in the next one. In this one, uh, work out this 20, okay. take it as a challenge and then use dictionary, use Google search and then identify the correct answers and remember them. It is like today all answers are available on the internet, you can easily search and get the answers, but then note it in your notebook memorize, remember and use it. Otherwise, the time you search and then give the answers and get 20 score, it just reminds that it is 20 out of 20, but in practice it is just 5 or 8. In practice also it should be 20 out of 20. Okay. Let us start, I wish you that you all do very well in this one. So, give the correct form of the underlying words, 1, meet Madhav, he is my older brother. The word underlined here is older and you have to check whether it is right or wrong and like obviously, I have given the wrong form and you have to tell me what is the right form, the next one. 2. My sister-in-laws are coming for dinner tonight. Mind you, some of the expressions like this looks very normal and looks like something that is exactly correct but they are not correct and acceptable, especially if you want to speak good English and they are errors which should be corrected. Even if you have been saying this maybe for 20 years, 30 years of your lifetime, it is high time you get them corrected now. Okay. So, they are wrong, you have to identify what is wrong and come out with the correct ones and remember them. Third. Anjali's niece has grown up, underlined uh, phrase grown up, identify what is wrong in this. 4. I just got to know that Binayak has married with Supriya, we use this very often, okay, but looks like what is wrong with this. So, look at the underlined phrase married with, correct it. Fifth one, they have got a beautiful home in the hills, again it is something we keep saying normally. But what is wrong with using home, the underlined word here? 6. My brother lives in abroad, again a very common uh, uh, expression, lives in, what is wrong? 7. I have been brought up in a joint family, this is the most interesting one because uh, uh, some of you cannot even think of another word other than joint family. Please look it up on a dictionary, google it and check whether it is the right thing you are doing when you say I live in a joint family, check that. 8. Dad and I have a lot of things in common between us, again this commonly said like she and me, we have lot of uh, uh, things in common between us. What is wrong with in common between us, how can you improve on this? Nine. 
I have good relations with my customers. Relations is the word you need to check. Then I have to care for my aged parents. What is wrong with the use of this aged or aged? 11. People dream to visit the USA. To visit, what is wrong with to visit? Especially when it is combined with dream. How do you improve on this? 12. This again, uh, uh, most of you do this. Please excuse me, I did not mean to step on your shoes. So, in crowded uh, bus, in crowded train, lift. So, when you inadvertently step on somebody's shoes, you say this, please excuse me, I did not mean to step on your shoes. 13. In the previous one, the phrase you need to look at is, please excuse me itself. What is wrong in using that in this context? 13. Ashok is good in cricket, good in underline words, check them up. 14. Many times I see my neighbor cycling to my office, many times, what is wrong with the usage? 15. This again I have heard from my students many times. Last to last year, I was in Bangalore. How do you correct this? Last to last, the most common error. 16. Today morning, I met Sheetal. What is wrong with today morning? 17. This again, uh, people say this when they are uh, going to give some break. They say, I will see you after a week. How do you correct this after a week? 18. Most common error, which again we will discuss in detail in the next one. I did not had my breakfast. So, meaning I did not had my breakfast. So, what is wrong with did not had? 19. We have lived here since 3 years. The underlying word is since. What is wrong with since? 20. I met Gauri 3 years before. Before is the underlying word and what is wrong with this underlying word? Give me the correct word. And this time you should have just underlined the words in your notebook also and then identify the correct form and what you think is the right one, write it and keep it ready for the next video, next lesson in which I will begin with discussing the answers and then you can check them and then assess your score also. Now, just to conclude with one motivating thought about learning any language, not just English. It is from Ludwig Wittgenstein, a very famous philosopher and uh, uh, language researcher and uh, linguist. So, he says, the limits of my language mean the limits of my language. So, if I make many errors, if I commit many mistakes, that is the limitation. So, if I convey my ideas effectively, if I am able to express what I feel inside me so easily, so fluently, so succinctly, so powerfully, so effectively and get what I want through my communication. This means, my world is widened unlimited, but if I am not able to do that and language is a limitation for me, whichever language it may be, it only implies the limits of my world. My world becomes narrow, confined, okay, within a closed circle and there are many worlds which we need to experience. So, we need to enlarge the horizons of our world using the merits of language by overcoming the limitations which we have and hopefully these kind of uh, videos try to help you to identify your limitations first, address them, accept them. Many of you do not accept that I do not speak uh, with full of mistakes, okay, I am too good. 
So, the moment your mind thinks like that, it is a fixed mindset, it is rigidity of thinking, it will not let new thoughts to come, it will not accept even if hundreds of videos like this will teach you lessons, will make you work, your mind has to be open and then you receive the ideas, accept your mistake and then move ahead okay. and then you will find that you are starting to live a new life and new avenues, new windows are getting opened. Okay. So, with this thought, let me uh, conclude and uh, just apart from the book of uh, Soumya Sharma, the recent one, it is just 180 rupees available through Amazon, Flipkart so and uh, your local uh, bookseller also, Common Errors in English that is published just this year. There is a slightly old book published in 1998 if you want to know more about uh, common errors, but the difference between the other book published in 1998, Turnton and Heaton's Longman's Dictionary of Common Errors is that it looks for accuracy in terms of the British standard English and the deviations in general. But Soumya Sharma's book focuses particularly on the way mostly the Indian speakers, the non-English speakers commit mistakes in their day to day life. So, I would suggest that you start with this, it is a small book, you finish. I am just taking examples from these books just to tease you, okay, just to give you a taste of how you can improve your uh, English skills. But the book will satisfy your full uh, thirst of developing and enhancing your English skills and simultaneously your soft skills and along with your personality. So, thank you so much for uh, watching this video, have a wonderful day.